Hey, Michael, good to see you. Um, what are the challenges of preparing for a Suns team that you haven't seen in five months? And obviously the last time you saw them, you guys were a markedly different team than you are now. Uh, I mean, I don't know. They have the same challenge, I guess. So, uh, you know, you, you turn from round one opponent, Portland, uh, to a team that has some similarities. Uh, you know, you go from trying to game plan and guard Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, uh, and then you beat them, and now you have the opportunity to game plan for uh, Chris Paul and Devin Booker. Um, you know, both uh, very, very efficient and high-powered offensive teams. Uh, I think the, the one big difference, obviously, Phoenix is a, a really, really good defensive team as well. Uh, they were top six in both categories during the season. Um, but, yeah, we played them a long time ago. You know, I mean, Devin Booker didn't play one of those overtime games. Michael missed the first game. Uh, they've improved. We've improved. You know, I expect it to be a tremendous series. Uh, and, and I think one that our players are looking forward to. Matt Moore, the Action Network. Michael, uh, you talked a lot about in the Blazers series about wanting to keep a certain amount of firepower on and keep up with them. The Suns were 13th in threes versus the Blazers that were second in the regular season. Also, you guys were only outscored by six from three-point range in that first series. Do you like the rotation where it's at? Uh, has there been any sort of expectation of maybe changing the rotation going into this series, the new challenges, or do you expect to try and keep the same plan? Yeah, you know, I think after, you know, uh, winning uh, game six, uh, playing at a high level. Uh, the plan right now, Matt, is to go into the second round doing what we do. You know, uh, we're not going to change uh, how we approach things, how we've been playing just because we're playing a different opponent. Uh, so I expect the same rotation. Obviously, if and when we get healthy uh, with healthy bodies, Will Barton, P.J. Dozier, uh, if and when that happens, obviously that will change the rotation potentially. Um, but uh, while those guys are out, I think the group that we've been playing has played at a high level. Um, the, the same thing is going to apply from Portland to Phoenix. They play a lot of small ball. Obviously, they start DeAndre Eden. After that, they've used Dario Saric. They've used Frank Kaminsky. Uh, they could use Torrey Craig at the five. So uh, a lot of small ball in that second unit. Um, and you're right, the three-point line, you know, uh, there was definitely a concern of ours going into that series in terms of guarding it. Uh, but you know, we, we shot the crap out of the ball. I think we made 15 threes per game, shot 37, uh, and shot 41% from three, which are, uh, I think, was third in the postseason so far. So hopefully we can continue to shoot the ball as well. Um, hopefully our defense can be better than it was in the first round. Um, but we're going to have our hands full. Again, they were top six in offensive and defensive efficiency. They're top seven in every freaking uh, field goal percentage category. Uh, at the rim, mid-range, three-point, foul line. Uh, so they uh, they do a great job. And it's all orchestrated by a Hall of Famer and Chris Paul and, and a guy that's an all-NBA talent and Devin Booker. Michael Pina, Sports Illustrated. And Michael, uh, Monte Morris uh, just had the best playoff series of his career. I was wondering if you could just tell me what, what stood out to you in that series. And how would you just describe his role right now on the team, given all the injuries that you've endured versus what it was a year ago? Yeah, I think people forget that, you know, going into this postseason, Michael, uh, you know, Monte had 33 playoff games under his belt. You know, so th this isn't his first rodeo. This is not his first time. Uh, obviously, coming back from the injury, uh, I think really affected him. I didn't think Monte Morris um, was the usual Monte Morris in the first four games. Uh, I felt in game five and game six, he was phenomenal. Um, came off the bench, uh, played a high number of minutes, was very aggressive. I think that's the key in, in all of Monte's time here in Denver. We always talk about when Monte is aggressive, he is a different player and he allows our team to be much different because he's playing to the rim. He's putting pressure on the defense. He's kicking out the shooters, whatever it may be. Um, and, you know, game six was a thing of beauty down the stretch uh, the defense was great. We held the Blazers to 14 points in that fourth quarter. Um, but just the two-man game, the on-court chemistry and synergy between Monte and uh, Nicola 
uh, was just incredible. He made the right play time and time again, which Monte has been doing since he's been in high school. Uh, his mother deserves a lot of credit. His mother is a coach. Uh, she knows the game and she's taught Monte how to play the game. And uh, I, I think as a head coach, you love having a player on the floor who you know is going to run your team, value the ball, and make everyone around him better. And I felt Monte's aggressiveness in five and six against Portland uh, were what separated those games from the first four. Ashley Neville, Mile High Sports. Hey, Coach, good to see you. I know back in 2010, you actually coached under Monty Williams and you coached Chris Paul. What is your relationship like with them today? And what are maybe some secrets that'll maybe help you get the edge on them when you're coaching against them? Yeah, I don't know if there's any secrets at this point, Ashley. Uh, yeah, I spent a year working with Monty in New Orleans. Um, I spent a year coaching Chris Paul. Uh, still have uh, very good relationships, very healthy relationships with both of them. Uh, you know, with Monty, first and foremost, obviously, you know, was indebted to him. He hired me. You know, I was in Cleveland for five years. There's a major shakeup um, after LeBron James took his talents to South Beach. Um, I took mine to the Big Easy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Monty is a class act. Um, he's passionate. He's a hell of a coach. He's a teacher. Um, he played the game. He's dealt with a lot in his life. Uh, and his um, belief his spiritual beliefs, his faith uh, have gotten him through some really tough times. Uh, and, and I know for me, for one, I don't know if I could have gotten through what he's gone through, he and his family. Uh, so he's a tremendous human being. Uh, and then you talk about here's a guy that was voted on by his peers as NBA coach of the year. He got my vote uh, for what he's done with that team. Um, so uh, just nothing but love and respect for Monty. Uh, and Chris Paul, uh, I think he and I hit it off in the year, uh, the year we were together, Ashley, and we've stayed very close through the years uh, because we're very similar. You know, we're both very, very competitive. We're both students of the game, always watching, um, and, and we, we shared that. But uh, Chris is spectacular. I've been able to coach some tremendous players in my career. Very fortunate to have had that opportunity to coach the LeBron, the Steph Currys, uh, the Nicole Jokic's, so on and so forth. And I know I'm missing some names right now, but Chris Paul, uh, is by far the greatest leader I've ever been around and probably the toughest competitor I've ever been around. Uh, and that's how he impacts every team and every locker room he goes into. Phoenix has rise this year. Yes, Devin Booker uh, got better. Yes, DeAndre Ayton got better. But a big part of that is bringing in a winner and a leader like Chris Paul that could help elevate everyone else on that team. And we've seen that happen. And they had, I think, the number one or two best record in the NBA this year. A lot of it had to do with Chris. Jacob Toby, Nine News Denver. Coach, two things for you. The first thing is, what is the latest on injuries with Dozier and, and Barton? And the second thing is, uh, more on Chris Paul, just what, what's it like to game plan for him? Uh, PJ and Will uh, right now are, you know, they're able to go through parts of practice today. Uh, Will's been doing that. That was the first for PJ. Uh, so there, there's definitely hope and optimism that they'll be available at some point during the series. Uh, Will is still probably slightly ahead of PJ, you know, but uh, you know, every day is a challenge. You know, there are good days and there are bad days. Um, so I'm, I'm not ruling out Will Barton for game one. We'll have to wait and see how the next 48 hours go, but uh, there's a chance that he could play. And maybe there's a chance that PJ Dozier at some point in the series uh, will be available as well. Um, the great thing about both of those guys and Jamal Murray all out, is that um, they are fully engaged and doing everything they can to help their teammates and this team win while not be able to produce or be active on the court. And, and I think that speaks to our culture. A lot of guys, I've seen this in my many years around this game, when they're not an active participant, they check themselves out mentally because they're more worried about themselves. And our group is never like that. We have guys that are invested in the man next to them and they want to see that guy have success until they get back. So I love that about our group. Uh, game planning for Chris Paul. I mean, we just game plan for Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum. So, I mean, you can argue who's got the greatest backcourt in the NBA right now. Devin Booker and CP are definitely up there, just like Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum are both up there. So we will have our hands full with a guy that uh, will know every one of our play calls. He'll know what we're trying to do. He'll make all of his teammates better. Um, you know, and he's been been there and done that time and time again. So 
uh, looking forward to a very, very uh, competitive series against the Suns. All right, Coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Vinny Benedetto from the Denver Gazette. Hey, Michael, Nicola just said that DeAndre Ayton kind of gives him more trouble defensively than than a lot of other guys in the league. I guess, what is it about Ayton that you think uh, presents that kind of challenge? Uh, I, I mean, Nicola said that, not me. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, may, maybe it's his size, his physicality. Uh, you should have followed up with Nicola on that one. Uh, yeah, he's, he's young, he's physical, he's athletic. Um, so, yeah, and he's really improved. You know, for, for him to come out of his first playoffs against the Lakers and to play the level that uh, he played at, um, I think we can all see the potential that DeAndre Ayton has. Um, he, he's a talented player. He went number one for a reason. So we'll have to find ways to help Nicola if he's feeling that way, uh, to give him different looks, put him in different areas of the floor. Uh, where we can look to get him comfortable and utilize all the skills that Nicola has. Thank you, Coach.